Uh, hello. This video will demonstrate to you uh, the new functionality of our new practices periodontal chatting. As with all the major uh, changes in practica uh, in the past six months or so, uh, we tend to keep the existing units for those people who are happy with them while introducing a new functionality, which is optional. So at the moment, this practice is capable of running two uh, different periodontal chartings. So the one which is uh, the existing one and um, the one which is the new one. And I will uh, demonstrate to you how the new one works. So for that, I will go to the management section and will switch to the new periodontal charting. So I'll go to the management section, practice details, uh, click on the period button. And you can see here in the settings, I've got period charting type one and period charting type to new. So the first one is selected. At the moment, I will select the new one, sorry. Um, it also gives me some other optional settings. Uh, the first one is a default jaw visibility, uh, allowing me to see one jaw at a time or, or both of them um, on the screen. Also uh, PSR, CP, ITN, uh, exam input. Also I can have both of them uh, showing on the screen or just show a particular particular one. So I will just keep showing Maxilla and showing PSR input and say OK. Um, going back to the schedule and appointment book and click on uh, a patient I want to have uh, a period exam with. So click on the patient file and click on the period charting. OK, you can see uh, the period chart uh, new period chart screen, uh, which is divided into three um, vertical parts. Uh, the central part is occupied by the chart itself. On the left, we have the clinical note section and as well as patient images. And on the right, we have the control panel, which allows us to change the configuration of the charting. So the clinical note section is exactly like anywhere else. Um, this is a new patient, so there are no clinical notes at the moment. I can just create a new clinical note. I can use my quick templates uh, in there, as I would do in any other part of the of this software. I'll just type here new uh, period uh, exam. And <clears throat> um, at the bottom of this section, there's an imaging uh, uh, module which allows you to see the the patient images uh, in um, descending order so by by the date uh, if you want to see a particular image you can double click on that uh, it sort of maximizes the image you've got the tools uh, standard tools which allow you to zoom in uh, rotate um, your image um, you know reset it back to to where it was so I'll just zoom it in a bit and so close the tools uh, for example, so you can actually preview the image. Uh, also, you may notice that uh, we can actually resize those panels. Uh, we can resize the panels to either increase the uh, uh, clinical note section or increase the imaging section. Uh, that's just a, a horizontal slider which allows us to, to, to change their height. But we can also change the proportions and, and size of the of the overall uh, view here. And as you can see, uh, I can increase, you know, uh, the image size uh, significantly uh, while reducing the size of the chart at, at, at the same time. So if I do it backwards, you will see that um, the image is reducing while the chart is, is, is getting increased. I can uh, close it whatsoever completely. So you can see the sliders are still there. I can still move them and open if I need to. But that allows me to maximize my charting area um, so that, uh, you know, it's a lot easier um, to, to input the data and a lot easier to see the results of the input as well. Now to the chart. Um, now uh, in, 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 in this new chart, uh, we have now inputs uh, associated with each particular tooth, unlike uh, it was in the uh, previous version of Practica where the inputs were a particular separate separate panel. So that makes it uh, a lot more visual, uh, a lot easier to, uh, to actually see the results and a lot easier to, to input the results as well. 
Um, at the moment, we're only seeing Maxilla, so you can see I can I can switch to to mandible by by just clicking clicking there, or I can see both. Uh, if I click both, it will show me both um, both charts together. So you know by adding the other uh, part of the screen, I can nicely arrange everything and uh, uh, um, an editable uh, manageable manageable screen. Um, at the moment, I will just go with Maxilla, so I'll just, as I say, I will maximize it so that I can see uh, the inputs, um, you know, in, the, in their maximum sort of uh, uh, size. And I will just look at the moment uh, at the um, control panel. So in the control panel, you can see there's an exam list uh, switch uh, which allows you to to uh, select. Uh, uh, between the existing exams. Um, there's a start new exam button, which will be active tomorrow. Uh, this is the day when this exam will, will stop being current and uh, we will be able to create a new period uh, exam. Uh, you can only create one period exam uh, for a single day. Uh, then we have the PSR section. This is where we can enter the uh, PSR measurements. I can either do it by clicking and selecting a value from the drop-down box, or I can use tab to switch between between the inputs and enter the number uh, directly, like that, just on my keyboard. So switch to the inputs and, and enter the numbers on the keyboard, like that. So, uh, And I can also specify the diagnosis, for example, healthy. Uh, the next uh, part of the control panel uh, allows us to use preset exam sequences, so which would stand for uh, probing depth, probing depth recession, probing depth location and mobility, probing depth uh, bleeding and separation, or all. At the moment, the all is selected. As you can see, every input uh, is active. I can I can input any data anywhere I like. Uh, <clears throat> if I select PD only. Uh, you will see that it disables all the other inputs uh, uh, apart from the probing depth. So probing depth is the only uh, enabled input now, and you can easily see that in the switches on the right side of the chart. Uh, those switches um, are interactive. You can actually enable or disable any, any input uh, in the chart. Uh, like that, you can configure it uh, the way you like it rather than using presets. So if I click PDR, you can see that the probing depth and recession at the moment are selected. If I select PDFM, you can see probing depth, uh, mobility, um, and forcation are selected. If I select PBS, it will select probing depth, bleeding, and separation. If I select all, everything is enabled. I may do it any way I like. I may only say, look, I'm only doing bleeding there, and I'm only doing recession on the other uh, on the other side so that's that's possible possible as well um, I will select uh, all at the moment so all of them are selected so all the inputs are selected um, now the way um, the input is happening now is that we have the auto switching facility which allows you to to um, basically change the focus automatically or, or place the cursor uh, in the new next input uh, once you enter a value so without pressing any tab buttons or, or, or any other keys uh, or you can do it manually manually meaning that uh, you need to switch from one um, input to another either by a tab or, or by using a mouse for example so at the moment I am in the auto switch mode and if I place my cursor in um, in the input for the distal uh, um, measurement uh, for sorry for the distal probing depth measurement of, of the 18th tooth, uh, I can just enter the value. And once I enter the value, uh, it will automatically switch to um, to the next input. So if I press one, you can see it automatically switches to to the next input. Um, uh, if I press 2, it switches to the next input. If I press 1 again, it switches to the next tooth. So that is configured by the side movement. And at the moment, uh, the side movement, which is which is uh, that sort of side selected, uh, um, goes through a single measurement. So it will go through the through the uh, probing depth 
uh, of every tooth, uh, first of all on the facial uh, side, and then it'll change to palatal side. Uh, and then once it completes that, it will then switch to recession and it'll go like that. So recession, first facial, then palatal, and then it'll go to the bleeding and, and so on and so forth. I will just demonstrate to you that fairly, fairly quickly. So I will just be entering zero, ones, and twos uh, for all the um, teeth here. So one, one, two, one, 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 zero, one, one, zero, two, three, ones, one, zero, one, and so on and so forth. You can see that once I enter, it quickly switches to another another uh, input. And once we come to the last last input here on this side, on the facial side, and I'll just enter here three, it will then jump to the palatal side of the same tooth. And we'll highlight that, and I can continue entering. And as you can see, it now moves right to left uh, along the palatal side. So. I'm just entering some measurements over there, and you can see the graph is being created. It puts the values, the values on the graph over there, and we have um, uh, finished uh, the uh, probing depth measurement. And as you can see, once I finish that, uh, the cursor is automatically placed into the recession me measurement uh, over there at the top, and I can then go and do the recession. So one, one, two. And as you can see, the recession graph is now also being built, and the, the loss of attachment graph uh, summarizes uh, or sums up the measurement of the uh, probing depth and recession in there. Um, the recession can be uh, a negative number, so we can put minus 2, for example, and as you can see, uh, or minus 3 and minus one for example so you can see the, the graph is being adjusted to the to the um, negative values of recession so minus one zero minus one something like that so and then again it jumps it jumps uh, to the next tooth so i will just do zero one two and going again on the on another side as well so <clears throat> i'll just continue continue uh inputting the numbers here. I can put space, uh, by the way, to switch between, or in fact, any character apart from the number will just switch me uh, to a next tooth. So uh, if I put nine, obviously, uh, it will it will then enter the number. Now I'll just change nine to four, one, two. If I need to, to correct something, I can either use tab and move Tab, by the way, works as well, uh, or I can just click anywhere um, on the in any input. Once I click on the input, it actually uh, highlights the input, and then you know I can I can either continue entering the numbers or, or use a tab to to further uh, proceed um, to next inputs. So I'll just put one one two one, and you can see now it goes to bleeding. Uh, bleeding now has uh, incremental values, so it used to be only a yes or no. Now it has three degrees of, of bleeding. Uh, you can, if you are not using degrees, you can just put one and just put bleeding, bleeding one there. Um, you can put two and three, so this is the maximum value. So if I try to put four or five or six or seven or eight or nine, uh, it will always replace it with the maximum allowable value, which is three. So basically, I only have three choices, zero, sorry, four choices, zero, one, two, and three. So if I can put zero, zero, or one, two, three. Again, if I use space or I use any character, A, B, C, D, it will always be zero. So it will only recognize the legal inputs, which are zero, one, two, and three. Any other input will just um, uh, place you or will just proceed to the next input over there so two three i will just go zero 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 one two um zero 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 one two again it goes into another side and i will just do one one space one one space 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 one one i'll just use spaces to to enter and one here now and one there 
Now it goes to separation. So if I separation is um, uh, can only be one or zero, so there are no incremental values there. So any number will give me one uh, apart from zero. So any character will give me zero, space will give me zero. So um, it's either one or, or anything basically. And as you can see, the separation. Uh, is being entered also on the graph. So if it coincides with with the um, bleeding, it'll just um, uh, split the icon into two parts. There'll, there'll be a part with a number and the part with with just a separation showing in there. Uh, what I'll do, I will not enter all, all this operation just to save time. I will switch straight away to mobility and plug. Now, mobility is also incremental, more so uh, you can also, so I can enter one, for example, and for plug, I can enter two, for example. So you can see that it shows plug and it shows it shows mobility. So the mobility is being shown here with with um, uh, sort of double double headed arrow, and um, the plug is being shown right on the tooth. Um, the intensity of that plug will depend on the on uh, the values. So the plug measures from zero to three. Now, mobility is incremental. Not only it's incremental, it can be also fractional. So we can actually enter uh, one plus uh, or two plus values. Uh, to do that, I would need to first press plus and then enter the number. So plus one, for example. Uh, so, and that should plus two, uh, that should enter uh, the, the value uh, the mobility value of, of plus one or plus two. So <clears throat> the, the plug again, oh, I can just do normal values. So uh, the plug, as I say, will, uh, no matter what number I'll place there, the maximum number is always is always three. So it will, will um, only show the maximum value of three. Uh, the forcation, uh, similar story. The maximum value for forcation is three. Now forcation in a new chart uh, is measured on the surface. So it used to be only one value um, per side. Now there are three values uh, per side. So there are six values basically recorded for a tooth. Again, if you do not want to do that, you can just record probably one value, um, but you can record all six values uh, for the tooth uh, over there. Now, uh, when it comes to saving your data, uh, it's quite similar to what we had uh, in our previous in our previous uh, version of the period. Um, uh, the save is actually happening when you switch from one tooth to another. So, uh, at the moment, once I switch to tooth 16 from tooth 17, uh, it has automatically saved uh, the exam. So, uh, you can still save it save it by clicking the save button. Uh, so it saves saves the exam, but the exam was already saved uh, in there. So uh, as I say, it's it's being saved automatically every time uh, uh, you switch to a new tooth. You can also, as as I said, you can you can use the auto switch feature, or you can use the manual manual switching. Um, if you are using auto switch and you need to enter a number uh, which is more than nine, let's say we, here we need to, or, or there, we need to enter a number which is say 10 or 11 or 12. So if I try to do 11 uh, with automatic, I will just enter one and one uh, input and one and another input, but I want to do 11. So for that, I, I can switch to manual with tabs uh, input and if I switch to a manual input rather than auto switch, it will not will not jump to a next next input. So if I can then enter number ten here, uh, but as you can see, uh, if I need to then to switch to another another input, I would need to use tab, uh, or I need to use uh, my my mouse to actually switch to to another tooth. But that and allows me to enter. Uh, such values as that without uh, jumping to a next next um, next input. So auto switch uh, will only allow you to use the numbers from zero to nine, 
uh, because it considers 10 as two numbers, one and zero. If you want to enter a number larger than than um, than, t than nine, uh, you need to switch to manual manual uh, entry options and uh, uh, enter click on a particular particular input, uh, which will be highlighted on your click and um, enter enter that number. So then and then you either uh, enable again the auto switch or use your keyboard sorry use your tab button or uh, mouse to switch to another another input. Uh, the last thing which I would need to show you uh, is printing. So if I need to print the chart, I'll just go click print, select print option, go to print, and I will just use a PDF preview just to show to show uh, the chart uh, over there in the printing. So there we go. Um, the chart is printed. And I can then close uh, my my period charting and finish my period exam.